Hi everyone, welcome to The Superficial Spirit, where we explore how pop culture affects our spiritual experiences. My name is Peter Breeze. Join me while we ask a very important question. What the hell did pop culture do to me? Welcome to the Superficial Spirit. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Hope you're doing well. Today, we are talking to the spiritual gaze. Okay, this is a podcast that I discovered when I first started my podcast and I was looking to connect with other people in the spiritual podcasting world. I mean, just the spiritual community, I guess. And what drew me to them was, well, their title, because I have found in my spiritual journey that uh, spirituality and the queer community don't always go hand in hand. I think mostly because of religion, ultimately, like if you if you trace it back to what makes people uncomfortable, it's because they've had messages growing up that they were wrong or they were illegal or bad or whatever in any kind of way. And sometimes that stems from religion and people still put religion and spirituality in the same category. For me, my spirituality stemmed from different places. Pop culture um, primarily is what I think was the conduit for it. And I'm excited to talk to Brandon and Angel from the podcast about their experience with spirituality. They do a lot of um, tarot and healing and things like that. They have a school and we'll talk to them. And it's an interesting time for them to come on the show because I've had a lot, I've been having a lot of conversations that have been very critical about the new age community and about you know the commercialization of spirituality. And so I do think it's important to keep both sides active. Um, I do think having those critical conversations is important so that people can move forward towards these things with open eyes. You know, the big thing about manifestation and the law of attraction specifically is one topic that I keep talking about is that it's so intoxicating because it gives you a sense that you can do, you can get what you want without doing anything, you know? you kind of take the onus off of yourself from doing the work and put all of the power into the universe or the cards or the crystals or whatever. And I don't think it works like that. It definitely didn't work like that for me. However, that doesn't mean that you can't have fun with those concepts. And that doesn't mean you can't explore them and see if there is something there that is useful, helpful, and healthy for you to take along your journey. Um, I think turning your back completely on concepts um, well, I guess it depends on your experience, because when I first started feeling like these concepts were maybe hurting me rather than helping me, I definitely turned my back. There was a draw in the line, there was a line in the sand, and I just, you know, I needed to take a break and regroup. That was about, I don't know, five years ago. So I do have some space and distance where I'm able to explore these ideas again with a healthy detachment. I'm not expecting anything magical in my life to fall out of the air. Although if that happened, that would be great. And I'm always optimistic that amazing things can happen. But the way that I approach my life now is basically the spiritual principles that have helped me that I maintain are meditation, daily meditation, positive self-talk. If I feel like my mind is going in a crazy direction and it's not helping me and it's making me anxious, then I talk to myself in my head, you know, I tell myself that I am smart, that I am capable, that I am good enough, that people do like me, that people do respect me. Um, and it does help. It helps calm me down. And those were concepts that I originally did find in books that were about manifesting in the law of attraction. So there are things that I've taken with me. Um, it's also given me a more well-rounded approach to how I tackle projects and relationships and any kind of conflict in my life. Whereas before I was always looking for meaning and every single thing that happened, it was like, what does this mean? What does that number mean? What does that dog mean? What does this person mean? And now I'm able to, to take things as they come and not look so hard for meaning. Sometimes things are just passing through your path for absolutely no reason. Sometimes it really is just 1111, you know, and you don't need to make a wish. If you choose to make a wish, that's okay. But, you know, I'm in this space right now where 
I am still curious about all kinds of spirituality and the way that people find inspiration and fulfill their lives and also the critical side. It's, it's an interesting place to be because I'm able to build my own kind of dialogue with the divine and with, this, with my spiritual side and make it work for me instead of me trying to fit into within certain parameters that I have told myself are spiritual or that other people have told me are spiritual. Whenever people tell other people to live within certain parameters in order to be good or better, I don't know if that works. I mean, unless you're talking about AA where people are, you know, they need to stop drinking, they need to stop doing drugs or they need to leave a bad situation. Sometimes structure is important. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, make spirituality work for you. Take what works and leave the rest. And without further ado, I think my guests are in California. I sure talk to a lot of people in California. I'm really excited to have them here. Angel and Brandon from The Spiritual Gaze. How the hell are you? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you both? We're good. How are you, babes? Good. Look at that beautiful sun in the background. I know, right? <laughs> Our big glamour through the mirror. <laughs> I love that. You guys are in LA, right? We are, mm -hmm. yeah. Lucky. I'm in Toronto. It's very cold. Oh, I know. We're having like a non-winter day. It's like 80 something degrees here, which is wild. Wow. Not to say that to try and rub it in your face. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, wow, sounds beautiful. Can I have vacation yeah. there? I don't know when I'll be able to go back there, to be honest. Oh, I know. I know. We don't know when we'll be able to leave our house, to be honest. So, you know. <laughs> are you guys in crazy lockdown right now? Yeah, we are. I mean... We've been in crazy lockdown since March, just like personally, we've just been so conservative and playing it so safe. Um, yeah. And it's wild that Los Angeles, you know, is just like the epicenter of COVID right now. Um, I've seen that, yeah, on Instagram, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't necessarily know it <laughs> based on the way people <laughs> are so. Yeah, it's interesting, social media kind of, it, it sort of outs people in lots of different ways. Um, do you follow the account Gaze Over COVID? Where all you know I do. <laughs> Ooh, child. Honey, that was a rabbit hole. Holy moly. A few yeah. people sent it to me and I was like, I just, I don't want to get myself worked up. And then when I sat down and watched it or like went through it, it was, it was pretty shocking. You know? Yeah. It's hard. It's I mean, yeah. not just like, you know, our siblings in the gay community, but even when you just like see friends or family or loved ones making really bad decisions, it's hard to like not judge them. It's hard yeah. to like not that color your perspective. I know, I know. And the gay community, doesn't matter what city you're in, it's small. It doesn't matter how big the city is, I should say, it's small. Like chances are, you might not know somebody directly, but I'm sure somebody's like, oh, oh, I, I know. I know that guy, I know her. <laughs> so what do you guys um by the way i'm recording now so um are you ready to go is there anything you want to go over before we jump into it okay so. i'm so i'm so like i so i started my podcast because of the lockdown like when when covid first came i got laid off i work in events and i was like i need something to do and i immediately was like i need to find other gay spiritual people and i was going through the list and, and your podcast came up really quickly and i was so happy to find it i love the name the episodes are great and i reached out to you pretty fast i was like i need to have these guys on the show so thank you for getting back to me i really appreciate that yeah, we're so excited. We also are hungry for like gay spiritual community. That's mm -hmm. kind of why we created the spiritual gaze in the first place. So this is just lovely. Thank you for reaching out and being patient with us because our DM inbox <laughs> is a dumpster fire. And we are I so disorganized. Bet. Sorry that we did not get back to you in a timely fashion. No problem. So Angel and Brandon, which one is which? Because now I'd feel like I don't know who. I'm Angel. Angel and Brandon. One, obviously, and mm -hmm. I'm Brandon. Yeah. The light is shining from heaven right on Angel's face. It's very <laughs> exactly. I love it. So why don't we start, like, we started off just kind of saying the gay community, the queer community, and spirituality don't necessarily mesh organically. I know for me, you know, my first foray into the gay community was nightlife, which is 
in a way the exact opposite of spirituality, even though I, I'm a strong believer that that ultimately was a conduit for me to open up spiritually my, my obsession with fame and celebrities and nightlife gave me the parameters to express myself and be myself and get a sense of community, which ultimately opened me up to spirituality. But it, it, I feel like the, the people that I've met in the spiritual world aren't always connected to the queer community. And so bridging that has, I wouldn't say it's been challenging because I do have some friends, but it doesn't seem to go like, you know, peanut butter and banana. It doesn't just mesh naturally. Why do you think that is? Well, I think we have to remember that as queer people, we actually are inherently spiritual. And the thing is, is that we have forgotten that because we have been looking at ourselves through a lens of a heterosexual oppressor. So we don't see ourselves as gay people as nature would have us see ourselves. We are still healing the lens of looking at ourselves through the commodification of capitalism and through heterosexuals. So the gay clubs, they make money off of us and it's a way that capitalism informs it. Now, I also, you know, love to go to a club. I am sometimes and love to go to a drag show. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that those aren't spiritual in nature, but what I think is lacking is places for queer people to gather in spirit that don't involve substances or having sex with each other mm -hmm. because that's what's been easy, I think, for straight culture to attach and to oversimplify our identity, right? We're either right. a fact or we're a wig or we're a designer brand. <laughs> right. It's so, so, so true. Um, when I was growing up, there was no queer, I'm 35, so there's no gay people in the media. Like I remember Queer Eye for the Straight Guy coming out or like Will and Grace. And so you had the caricatures of the really flamboyant men. And it, I felt like, I, I kind of seeing that honestly made me uncomfortable because it felt like that's what I had to be. And so when you go to the club, you you force yourself into a role because there is no other reference point. And so you're right. If you go to a club and you see drag queens, you're like, I'm feminine. Maybe I'm a drag queen or, you know, I'm not feminine. So I better be the muscle gay. And you sort of we we huddle together in these little groups. But I do like what you say that, you know, we're inherently spiritual. I really believe that it's actually really natural for people to be spiritual, but we complicate it. We complicate it for many, many reasons. Religion has a big part of it because these ideas of what people think it is stand in the way, especially for gay people because they feel disenfranchised by it. And so it turns, it turns them off. They, they don't even want to explore it because maybe their family was super religious or their city or whatever. And it sucks because I have found so much beauty and health and happiness in it, but it, it, it's something I had to seek out, definitely. It wasn't just there. Yeah, I think it's a deep remembering on all levels because we also like want to remember the origins of spirituality before organized religion came in. And that's like what we're healing is that as gay men, and I know Angel can probably speak to this more than I can just because he comes from a Catholic background, which I think has more fear and there's a lot more to heal there, you know? I grew up Jewish, which is pretty, la reformed Jewish, so it's pretty laissez-faire. Yeah. My boyfriend's Jewish. I know all about the Jews, honey. Yeah, totally. Um, but I just wanna say, you know, like, I know that gay men were like the priests of the temple of Isis, you know? Like, if we go back far enough, yeah. we realize that like, it's all there. We just have to go back further than what we were brought up in. Exactly, yeah. If you think back to like indigenous cultures, I mean, within a lot of those spaces, like the queer people, the gay people, the trans people were seen as spiritual, just naturally. Like they were deemed like a gift to the society. Exactly. And I think that what happened was, yeah, the mainstream culture, mainstream society was overwhelmed by, I'm just going to call it Christianity. And then everything was seen through that lens. And you know, that then deemed anything that was remotely connected to sexuality a sin. Yeah. And particularly then, I mean, obviously, like queer sexuality was then even more, you know, seen fearfully. Yeah, know? demonized. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it also kind of goes hand in hand with how we've become over identified, like with the sex act. 
which is yeah. that like as, as queer people, we're so much more than like who we fuck, right? Totally. But the way we're viewed and seen through a heterosexual lens is like, that's it. And that's all y'all are, you know? Yeah, well, I, and it goes, like I'm thinking now, the first time I went to Pride without having any context, like nobody in my family sat me down and was like, this is the AIDS crisis. This is Stonewall. <laughs> this is why, like nobody was okay. How was I supposed to know? It wasn't until, you know, five years into the club scene that a dry queen at five in the morning was like, hey girl, let me give you a history lesson on, on what it is. And I mean, that's why our community is important. And you said an interesting point, like, you know, if we took away capitalism and heterosexual norms and all of those things that keep a lot of people repressed, the, th the things that make us most ourselves are very natural, like sexuality, they're natural impulses that we're told to ignore. Um, spirituality, natural impulses that we're taught to ignore. And it's interesting, I haven't had anybody bring that up specifically about if you go back far enough there is a celebration of spiritual, a natural celebration of spirituality and sexuality and gender identity. And then slowly it gets, you know, taken away specifically in the conversation of queer folks. So how did you both discover your spirituality? How do you reconcile that, you know, when you were growing up and, and finding it? Yeah, well, I, like Brandon mentioned, I was raised Catholic, um, but I actively removed myself from the church at the age of 13. Um, you know, I think, well, I mean, partially because I just, I knew I was gay already and I was in like, you know, Sunday school classes and hearing that that was wrong. So I was like, well, it's not going to work out for me in the long run. Um, not that I can tell anyone that. Um, I also think like, I was like a huge Madonna fan, like from <gasps> really yes. early. I'm wearing a Madonna shirt. Oh my God. Are you? Oh my God. Amazing. Oh, I yes. love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Love her. Yeah. So I think, you know, I mean, I was raised in the eighties, you know, like, so for me, like, I think seeing like her bring up like questioning of Catholicism specifically for me at like 11, 12, when like a prayer album was coming, all of that stuff, like, I think was also a big part of my like shift and awakening on top of the fact that she was also like talking about gays, talking about, yeah. Gays. Um, yeah, having those conversations, like she was my mom having those conversations with me that my mom wasn't right. having. She was the wow. drag queen at 5 a.m. Totally, which is why, <laughs> I, yeah, which is why at one point I did literally like say to my mom, like Madonna is my mom, not you. <laughs> I'm so happy you're saying this about Madonna because I, th this, I mean, this is something I'm extremely passionate about. The role that these celebrity icons play specifically for gay men, because we need to find our own path and it might not be in our personal lives. We turn to pop culture and then they end up being our guiding light. Even though people from the outside are like, what, what is spiritual about Madonna? How can Madonna help people in self-development? But they don't know what it's like to be a kid who feels alienated. And then suddenly this famous blonde woman is like, it's okay to be gay. AIDS is an issue we need to deal with. There's problems with the um, Catholic church. It, it's like a bridge. It's like, here is your humanity and you can, that's what Madonna does. Like, this is why, this is why I'm so passionate about the link between pop culture and spirituality because it does open that door for people. Completely. And it hugely helps us define our, our identity to some degree. And then of course it becomes, as we grow older, how do we remove ourselves from it? And uh -huh. that's where I think yes. you get like, <laughs> you know, we can get into like, the deep state of Stan culture, which is like a whole other thing where it's like, they can do no wrong and idolatry. Absolutely. And actually, like, did you see her Instagram post? It was not good. You know, so it's like, you then true, have to true. You know, learn for yourself, speak for yourself. And that's a whole other process. But, yeah. you know, for me, ultimately, I think I did then kind of divorce myself from religion, spirituality, um, and surprisingly found my way back in the late 90s, not because of Madonna's Ray of Light album, though it did surprisingly <laughs> coincide with it. <laughs> so I was like, oh, we're still on the same page. But I then found my way into what is, I guess, considered like modern new age spirituality, um, simply by working at like a sort of new agey bookstore. And oh, that, cool. Yeah, and that really kind of opened my eye. I mean, and I got that job because I needed a job you know, to help get me through school. And um, it was close to home. And, but through that really kind of opened myself up to, you know, questioning um, identity and, 
and just everything through that lens. That's really cool that you were able to, you know, find it organically again, grow up with something that was conflicting messages. And then through that job, you're like, oh, wait, there's another kind of spirituality that maybe will embrace me instead of kicking me out the back door. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And as a queer person, yeah, you grow up sort of looking for family, right? To some degree, if the family you were born into doesn't feel entirely like home. Yeah. Uh, and so that was also a space where for the first time I was able to find, you know, sort of have that initial chosen family to some degree. Yeah. And that's where you discovered astrology. It was where I really discovered astrology. I mean, I'd always read my horoscope when I was younger, just for like fun, because I'm like super self-absorbed. Um, <laughs> but and like, yeah, it was there that I was sort of, um, yeah, called into studying astrology and became a professional astrologer and tarot reader by you know the age of 23. <laughs> wow, that's a... That's, that's impressive. I mean, I remember seeing horoscopes too growing up. And now that, now that I'm thinking about it, that was crazy that modern spirituality has evolved so much. But even back in the 80s, 90s, you would go to the back of the newspaper and there would be horoscopes. And I never really made the link between that being spiritual or anything. It was just a part of daily life. Did you read your horoscope? I'm a Scorpio, so I'm drawn to like the deep, dark things. Um, and I had similar experiences. I wasn't raised with religion, but I was curious. My dad died when I was young. I had a sense that there was something else out there. And the new age world spoke to me. Um, when I was younger, I was curious about God and I had gone to psychics and stuff like that, but it was really the law of attraction and manifesting, I would say, that was like, boom, and tarot cards. When I got into my 20s and I was like, oh my God, that people are creating a new kind of dialogue with the divine, with God, and they are finding a way that works for them outside of religion. And it was incredibly empowering. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there are as many different types of spiritual practices as there are people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yes. In some ways have to create your own spirituality that encompasses your own uniqueness and you allow it to evolve over time. I mean, it makes me think of, to speak tarot, the fool, right? Like the fool, the fool is encountering every moment without judgment from a place of acceptance. And I think the trap in the new age spiritual community is to try to understand everything, is to try mm. to create this grand sweeping you know, system that will satisfy all of your questions and will tell you, you know, what happens after you die and how to, you know, manifest the life of your dreams. Mm -hmm. And I think unfortunately or fortunately, it's a lot more complicated than that. Yeah. And that there is complexity that we will probably never understand, but that doesn't mean we can't probe into it and we can't meet every experience from that kind of spiritual unknown place and just be the fool and see where it takes us. Yeah, I think that healthy curiosity is important because it it takes people further along whatever path they need to go down. And I do agree with you that there is endless ways to um, engage your spiritual side. And it's important that people know that they don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You have to find something that makes you fulfilled and happy and 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 I hate to use the term high vibes because it's not about always being happy, but it's about feeling connected to something bigger than you. Going to a concert can do that. Watching fucking Real Housewives can do that for me personally. Um, sex can do that in healthy ways. Nightlife can do that when you're out dancing with friends. Tarot can do that crystal. So I've actually had that conversation as well with um, different guests on my show about how spirituality is individual, just like your personality and your spirit. And it's an important message. Now, I'm. this is what I really want to get into with you guys is how do you recommend people ha have a healthy relationship with going to tarot readers, learning how to read their chart, going to astrologers. Because for me, it was like, when I started to feel lost, I really wanted to be a star, for example. So I kept going to tarot readers and all I wanted them to fucking tell me was that I was gonna be famous. Every once in a while, they'd be like, you have a bright future. You, you, know, you have a really unique energy and that was enough. But I definitely was taking the ownership off of myself to create the life that I wanted and putting all the power in the universe to 
hand me the experience that I wanted. So I started meditating. So I started doing tarot and I started doing all these things, not because it was enriching my spiritual life, but because I thought that's what I had to do to get what I wanted. And it took me, it took me nowhere. It actually was a disservice because then I ended up in a darker place. I had no faith. I had to start from the beginning and only now am I like, okay, there has to be a balance. You have to, sorry, hang on one second. Um, There has to be a balance between how you engage in these activities and these concepts and these ideas and these healers. And remember, there is a lot that's out of your control. There is a lot that's out of your control. You can't just think a millionaire, think like you're a millionaire and become a millionaire as an example, which a lot of these books try and simplify. Like you said, it can be more complicated. Um, So what do you think about that? Like, how do people come to you and have a healthy relationship with the the tools and the offerings that you provide? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Such a juicy question. I mean, there's like so many many places to go with that. Yeah. Way doorways into it. Oh my goddess. Well, the place I'm feeling compelled to begin, honestly, is you give such a beautiful, like vulnerable example, which is like, coming to spirituality because you wanted something from it that was tangible. Like you wanted spirituality to be your bitch and to make you a star, right? Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> spirituality ain't gonna do that, honey. You know what I mean? I've learned, yes, it's, I can tell you it doesn't. Spirituality is gonna sit you down and go, why do you wanna be a star? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you need to heal in yourself that you think fame is gonna heal in you? You know, spirituality mm-hmm. is a deep probing of the inner nature and it's not a, it's not a pill that makes everything better. And we get that, you know, there's a lot of spiritual Mm -hmm. bypassing, which we can talk about and magical thinking. And, you know, the new age world is rife with (laughs) white privilege and, you know, people not really understanding why we need, why we need a spiritual practice in the first place. And that is not always beautiful and it's not always easy. Right. Um, But it connects us to a deeper truth that we may not be able to find in our culture because we don't live in a particularly spiritual society these days. We're seeing the emergence of it. We're seeing people hungry for it. I think that's why people are reaching out for astrology and tarot and are trying to find the God or the goddess or universe or divinity in a place that they can access it. But it's not so that you can be rich or famous because that that might not be the bigger plan for your life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, that's just the first thing that I think is interesting because I too, you know, want to ask the cards, you know, like, how can I make my first million dollars? Right. And maybe the cards will tell me, but that might not necessarily be the most spiritual thing for me. Right. So I think we have to become clear on our intentions Yeah. because it all comes back to intention with why are we attracted to spirituality in the first place? Yeah. Um, like, you know, it's kind of like, If you want to diet and exercise just so you can look good in a bathing suit, or do you want to diet and exercise so that you can be in right relationship with your body? Right? What's the intention, you know, behind it? And what what intention is is likely to make it a lifestyle change and sustain you rather than be like chasing a high? Like you want to look good in the summer for the month of August. And then as soon as September comes, you want to veer off that path it's good intention is important and i i it it sounds so crazy like when you're saying back to me spirituality is not about making somebody rich and famous yes absolutely i know that now but a lot of the books are designed to make you feel like that is possible and here's the kicker i do believe that you can create any reality you choose within reason. Can everybody live their dreams? I don't know. But it's like that, that there's a line where, yes, you have to believe that everything is possible, but you cannot lose touch with reality, you know? Yeah, yeah, and again, I think it, yeah, I do really believe it does come back to intentions, you know, like you said, of like, okay, this is what I want, but I think what all of these books and programs tend to like, you know, try and bypass or move around is, the why you know okay well let's first step back and say why do you want that is it because you deep down believe that that is your purpose that is your path um and what is it connected to or is it because you fucking want to be on tv and like you know love the attention and like the glamour <laughs> and like want to be best friends with ariana grande you know like it's, yes. it's, it's <laughs> down to like 
you know, what are we driven by? And so I think, you know, for me, whenever I'm working with people, like I'm always like, okay, yeah, I'm sure you have questions about like your romantic life or your career or what have you, but like, we're gonna really talk about like who you are as a person and like where you are on your personal growth path. Yeah, because beautifully said. That I think is the key to then really understanding, okay, what is it that I am really supposed to be trying to manifest here? Yeah. It usually happens a lot more quickly and easily. Like when you are co-creating with a higher power, like when your dreams, I think are in alignment with the dreams of your soul, as opposed to the dreams of your ego, things can happen really fast. Whereas if you're just trying to manifest the dreams of your ego, sure, you can probably do it with enough chutzpah and sweat, mm -hmm. but it's going to take a lot more work, you know? And when you get that dream, you're probably going to realize you feel just as empty as before. And I think in the gay community, because I, I resonate with you too, you know, like, I pursued acting for a really long time. I thought if I could just be a series regular on a TV show, I would feel better about myself. I thought that would yeah. you know, heal all of my gay shame. And then I realized like, I don't need that. Like what I actually need through spirituality is just to feel free and to love myself. And I don't need fame or stardom or a million dollars in the bank to love myself. Yeah, absolutely. And I that is the lesson with fame to me what I learned through that exploration of chasing it, being obsessed with it, trying different ways to trick the world into making me a star, whatever, <laughs> I, I, I realized that it was a dissatisfaction with who I was, right? I, I had shame and insecurity about who I was and I felt I needed to be big and bright and whatever so that I was validating my own, ex my own existence basically. And now every time I have a good meditation in the morning, I want to scream from the rooftops like, it is so much simpler. I'm really like yelling to myself in the past, like, it's so much simpler. You don't need to be a star. You just need to be quiet, you know? Like, and that's where I ended up getting what I needed, which I didn't know I needed, which was cultivating inner peace, feeling grounded and connected to the people around me and letting that be how I am, quote unquote, a star. You know, shining from the inside out, the world around me. It doesn't have to be on TV, but, yeah, it was hard. It was really, really hard. And I think a lot of gay men do crave that spotlight because we need so bad for somebody to be like, you are seen, you are heard, you matter, you're special. Because we might not get it growing up and fame and now social media, it it's so, it's so tempting to want it yeah, and to right. try it. We didn't mm -hmm. get it growing up. None of us did unless you were magically raised by two gay dads who could Ugh. back to you, like your own magical queer brilliance. Like even if your parents loved you as mine did and did the best that they could, the flavor of gay shame is in the water that we drink. And so yes. that overcompensation is something that we all, you know, have to address, whether it's being a star or being the richest or being the prettiest or being the youngest. I mean, that's what's happening in the gay community, right? Is we're all trying to compensate for, for this feeling of lack that we absorb yeah. at a very young age mm -hmm. from a culture, frankly, that I think is scared of our power. Yeah. Totally. And it's cultivated now this whole like influencer mentality, right? Of yeah. Like, it's like, that's the new version of it. Right. Of like, yeah. You have that power because I don't feel like I actually have that power inside myself. Right. Yeah, the trap of the likes and the followers. I mean, it, it, it is a dopamine rush. Like you get the followers and the likes and it's like, oh, I need more of that. It's, it's exactly like a drug. And I... I mean, I grew up with the reality stars where people are like, oh God, reality stars have no talent. And now I'm like, oh God, influencers have no talent. There's always going to be that option for people to luck out and do nothing and get everything. But it's not a science. You can't just become that. It's not, it's not practical for everybody to chase. And it's not healthy because wow. ultimately it doesn't mean anything. 100,000 followers does not mean anything. It may translate to I don't know, a hundred dollar post that you get paid for shampoo. I mean, it might, it might, I have no idea. I'm not an influencer, but yeah, the deeper satisfaction came from, for me, for taking the time to look inwards and, and sit. So yeah. I want to know now about you guys, how you met. <laughs> I want to know how you 
discovered each other spiritually and and like how you decided to go into work together and and make this your life not just something you're passionate about on the weekends how did that come together yeah yeah totally um well we both frequented the same alley <laughs> <laughs> i know the one i thought you two were familiar Girl, don't expose the alley. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we were uh, we were actually set up. Yeah, we were set up. What? Yeah, we were, <laughs> I know it's crazy. We, we each we were duped. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, we were set up by <laughs> mutual friends who thought we would be good together. You know, which rarely works, right? Because usually it's like, oh, I have a gay friend. Oh, I also have a gay friend. We should set them up, right? I was going to say, I've never that, met a couple who's been set up and and is still together. We were set up by cis women, and they. <laughs> knew what they were doing who knew who knew wow so Brittany and Julie for setting us up <laughs> yeah shout out shout outs Brittany and Julie <laughs> um and it just kind of unfolded from there and I do think that you know one of the first interactions we had was a conversation about astrology honestly wow and I think that is a language that has been just like one of the thicker threads of our relationship. It's a language that we're able to speak and that's able to provide context for, I think, things that come up in relationship that are challenging to talk about. And it also, I think, kind of cemented right from the beginning that we were both in some way spiritual seekers and we're looking for spiritual partnership. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, yeah, it's hard to find, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, so you would say you were both already um, curious about spirituality, at least, and then your relationship sort of emphasized that? Yeah. I mean, I definitely recall even, I mean, at the time I had already worked as a full-time astrologer at times in my life. Like I was like very much in that world. Um, so even just in meeting Brandon and hearing him talk astrology, I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's, he actually knows what he's talking about, you know? And um, so that initially just like grabbed me that he was not just kind of like um, spouting off very basic things that we actually like had that language to talk about, which as someone who had been like actively dating, I was always finding myself suppressing the spiritual nature that I had because I didn't want to like scare off any potential suitor. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I was yep. just like, like me so what do you like you know like that was just so much easier and then i'd be like and then later i'll layer in the whole like astrology thing and see how it flies you know but with this it was just like so upfront that it made it um much easier and i think yeah as we um continued to connect and and you know and date and and you know and partner up like it became more and more just a part of the fabric of our of our lives um, to the point where, yeah, eventually, I guess, was it almost three years ago now? Um, I guess it was about three years ago at this point that we started to talk about, okay, how do we take this? And um, I don't even know if it was, the, how do we take this and put it out into the world, but I think I really wanted us to just be like having conversations like you. I was like super interested in like, you know, how are other people like managing like yeah. their lives in the world, but also being spiritual. Because at the time I was like working as a like a film executive at a company. Like I was like wow. having very sort of like real world existence. Yeah. At the same time I was going into these experiences like from this very different mentality than everyone else. And, you know, I had friends who were in all different kinds of fields. And so I was just curious, like, how are you navigating it? Um, Cause I just thought that that was interesting. And yeah. I think that was kind of then like the jumping off point for the Spiritual Gaze podcast. And then through cultivating that community then it became much more of like a larger thing that kind of spiraled into people wanting like, when are you going to start teaching workshops? And when are you going to oh, start I love that. community events? And when are you going to start doing this stuff? Because we need it. We don't, we don't have anyone. Um, and then it just kind of spiraled out of, out of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from like meeting our own needs to like meeting the needs of the community, honestly. Um, and I know like we're all in resonance here that like we are all hungry for like queer spiritual community. Like we yeah. want that. 
And so that's why we created the podcast and why we've created the healing circles and the classes and just to, you know, hold space. And we're not like gurus. We don't like have the way. We just, you know, <laughs> like, we're, like we're tarot and astrology experts because we've been doing it for a long time. But we also respect that these things evolve and that we learn as we teach and seeing what people bring to it and what they're going to do with it too. So it's just really nourishing. Yeah, I think that's where we met was that I, you know, we both approach spirituality, but from a place of like, does any of this make sense? You know, like, what is this really about? And so we always kind of had that question mark uh, attached to it. And, you know, I'm actually much more of even like a skeptic to it all at times. And Interesting. Still, okay. You know, always. I always have my little skeptical voice available to me at all times, um, which I actually think has helped me probably steer clear of certain pathways that I could have fell down and certain, you know, ideologies and what have you. Cause I always would kind of, and I think that was like the Catholic boy in me who was like, you know, what are you mm. saying? Like, <laughs> you love everybody except these people? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know? interesting, you know? So I was always really like, had my antenna up. Um, so I think that it's been nice to have a community where we're like, hi, we're here for you, but we're also just like you. I think that does change, that, that is important that nothing is for sure. We, uh, spirituality is an exploration. And I think it's important that, people are honest about that. And I think where problems arise is when people are off definite solutions to problems that they are not able to do that. And, you know, psychics and tarot readers and healers, I have, I've had such amazing experiences with all of them in many different ways. I've also gone to somewhere I'm like, you are out to lunch. You have no, yeah. I, you just sense that maybe you're not the best person to be holding space for other people. Um, I have like distinct memories of, you know, going to a psychic fair in the city I used to live in. And it was like all of these people were really struggling with money and, and relationships, giving other people advice on money and relationships. And I was like, wait a second, wait. I don't think this makes sense. Like why, what, what makes one person um, uh, qualified to give life advice to another person at a shopper's drug mart, you know, cosmetics party because they're t reading tarot cards. So how do you to negotiate that when people are coming to you for help and they're like, look, I need help. I need healing. Can you describe what healing looks like for you? Like the services you offer people and, you know, somebody who might be listening to the podcast who's like, what's a spiritual healer? What does that even mean? What do you offer to people? How do you help them? Yeah. Again, another like really juicy question. And I'm glad you're, you're asking it because something I wanted to say earlier was that we do have to be really careful to not give up our spiritual authority. And while we are professional readers and healers and we're here to help, like we're just here to help you trust yourself and to like put you back on path if you like have, have, fallen off a little bit or, or you doubt yourself because there are a lot of charlatans and snake oil salesmen and dangerous <laughs> that want mm -hmm. to wrestle your spiritual authority away from you and so that's why i said there's many different types of spiritual practices there are people on the planet if not more so because you really do have to find your own way but it's also really hard to read yourself because you're too close to it mm -hmm. you know so you need to go to somebody ideally who has some experience and they can be objective and that's done some good work so that they're not, you know, spewing their judgments and their unhealed shit on you. Um, but that they can give you some good perspective that you might not be able to get yourself just from sitting down with the cards or looking at your chart. But you have to be careful not to become addicted to that too. You know, like you want to make sure that you're not that sort of person. Remember like back in like the 90s, it was like, well, I have to check with my therapist, right? <laughs> like I, that's oh, yeah. you make sure it's like the same Ooh. thing. Like, now it's become, let me check with, let me my, check with my astrologer. Let me check <laughs> with my yes. shaman. Oh like, my God, check yes. Check with your heart, baby. Check with your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, I think for me, whatever the work is that I'm doing, whether I am facilitating spiritual healing, a tarot reading, astrology, it's just trying to help people reconnect with their own heart. And sometimes there's, there's a lot of stuff in the way you know yeah. based on trauma that we've experienced or just based on the world in which we grew up or so that's kind of the the overall right um spiritual healing specifically in terms of like the work i do from like an animistic perspective um is basically about helping to reconnect people to a source of divine power 
which mm. is not me. It's only coming through me by the grace mm -hmm. of goddess. And then they take it from there, you know, because there are some things and I, um, I look at this in some ways like through a recovery perspective because um, I'm, you know, in recovery from marijuana and it's about like, you know, the only way that I don't smoke weed is because of a power greater than myself. And thank God yeah. it's that power because it helps me accept and it helps me surrender. And everybody needs that sort of connection, whether it's to a higher self, to the earth, to whatever, you know what I mean? Like to share yeah. whatever it needs to be. But spiritual healing really is like, yeah, reconnecting so that, so that the healing can be done taking back the power and making people feel like whatever is causing them distress, they have the ability to change and filling them up with whatever it is they need to be filled up with. You know, it's interesting because their inspiration and healing can come from so many different places. And I do understand um, why people would be critical about anything in the new age community, but I also like, you know, you have that teacher that you're growing up with that is your drama teacher that gives you extra attention and they end up being such an influential force. They may not be a qualified therapist, but they do the right thing and they say the right things that make you feel like you're worthy. And that ends up being such a profound experience. I, I think that human beings are able to give that to each other just because we're having the same experience and you just have to really be able to you know, provide space and listen and support each other. Um, and then, like you said, just be careful that somebody's not getting obsessed and going down a toxic path with it. But it is a fine line. Um, and also the new age world, I think, is more susceptible to conspiracies, which is what we're learning about now in the media. So again, here's a question for you guys. Why do you think that is? Why do you think so many people in our community are prone to conspiracy theory thinking? Well, I think it, on one level, like, I don't know, it's interesting because I, I was really kind of removed from some of this, um, just this whole notion that like the, the, the combination of like new age and conspiracy, um, but it has really recently like come more into light. One of my like first astrology teachers is now like, you know, I followed her on Twitter and then suddenly it was like, 5G, like all of these things. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's what's happening. Uh -oh. Okay, yeah. So I, I've become much more like even just personally aware of it. And I do think it is on some level because, you know, first off, I think people are very easily like distrusting of, you know, anything that feels like tangible and controlling, right? So it's like government is tangible and it's controlling, you know? Yeah. And, so I think that there is just this like turning away from like any sort of like structured yep. system. Um, and so I think, you know, the new age mentality can lend itself to like, yeah, you know, we are not of this system, you know, we are yes. beyond this system. So I think it like easily can like lend itself to this like thinking of like, oh yeah, we are beyond like government control, you know, like, you know, like, it, and you, on some level, then can become also, I think, more easily just like susceptible to some of these, um, you know, trains of thought and thinking. Um, yeah, it's a really, it's a really interesting question. I don't think we're gonna be able to come up with like an answer why they seem to yeah. know each other so well. I mean, full disclosure, I'm an, I'm an Aquarius. I have Sun, Mercury, and Jupiter in Aquarius. So I love a conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, bitch, me too. I love I, them. Like, oh, I love it. But I also can tell you exactly what happens to my body when I start to read one. Right. I go into <laughs> a complete fear complex, right? Mm, like, it yeah. does not feel good. And so when yeah. I was meditating on this question, I was like, well, it's, over, it's an oversimplification, but like there's fear and love, right? There's fear and there's love. And conspiracy really capitalizes on fear and yeah. it's control through fear. And because the new age community, as we've talked about, is oftentimes looking to control. I'm trying to control my external reality. I'm trying to manifest everything. It is a good bedfellow, it is a good bedfellow with conspiracy because control is the underlying principle. Yeah. As opposed to Interesting. A spiritual 
philosophy, which is really just about like acceptance, right? Yeah, and surrender. And surrender. And so yeah. then, well, whether or not the coronavirus was created in the lab or not, <laughs> it's here and people are dying. So I need to accept that as a reality and move from there. Totally, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, I, 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 Angela, I agree with you that recently, it was more like I was hearing about the conspirituality. Actually, what actually happened? There was a podcast called Conspirituality and I had one of the guests on, on and it was so popular and people were fucking flooding my inbox and they were like, this is what we need. Fuck the new age community. It's people who are feeling disenfranchised from the new age community because they feel like the people they trusted are now saying 5G, it's a fake, don't listen to the government, don't wear masks, whatever. Um, and I was really surprised. I, I, I did not know it was that intense out there until I had done this interview. And so it definitely opened the door for more conversations. And it has been extremely illuminating because when I first felt, I guess, disenfranchised by this way of thinking. It was five years ago and I've I've grown since then and now I'm able to explore sp spirituality and surrender in a whole new way that works for me. Um, but there's a lot of people who I think are scared because they have put all of their eggs in that basket and then the pandemic has brought this new side or maybe it's not a new side, but this side of the community to life. And I think going into the new age community to begin with, you have to have an open mind. I mean, you're you're dealing with psychics and vibrations and things that are not necessarily proven. So you need to be have that healthy, playful dialogue with your community. And I think that can lead, like you said, it can lend itself to, I guess, like a rabbit hole of other ways of thinking. I love conspiracy theories. Last weekend, I watched four hours of YouTube um, UFO documentary fucking bullshit. I loved it. But at the end of it, I was like, oh, this is, I'm able to watch it and then be like, this is, this may, may be real, like you said, or may not, but I, I'm not going to give too much thought into there being an alien base in the, you know, desert of Arizona. I'm just going to go about my life. But if you're not able to have that critical thinking and you turn on the news or you go onto Facebook and people that you know, love and trust are terrified because they think that the government is trying to control them, kill them, whatever. It is so, so, so terrifying. And I, I sympathize with these people who are not trusting the world because can you imagine waking up and not trusting the government, the doctors, the media, it, it, I, I hope so bad that they find some reconciliation so that they can, I don't know, be more peaceful, but it, it's a problem. And I think that we need to, I don't know, critical thinking is important and remember surrender. Oh my God, it's happening regardless of how or why it's happening. And we need to move from that point. Yeah. Well, I, I find that it, it is understandable why, why people don't, trust in government, you know, like, yep. I don't know trust in government. I don't oh, always yeah. trust in the healthcare system. I don't always, totally. I don't always trust in media, you know? So, you know, I think that all of these have helped create a lot of the major problems that we are now trying to dismantle, you know, everything that was around, like, you know, sort of racial inequality and everything. I mean, a lot of that was built from all of these government practices, yep. media practices. That's right. Yeah, and everything. And so mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it makes sense to me that then in the spiritual community where a lot of people who, and it's a very, I think this is where the white privilege comes into it, is that, you know, there's a very privileged mentality with a lot of this stuff that you were talking about earlier, which is like, you are in charge, you manifest your own reality, you control your existence, you know, and I think that that is like, it's such a privileged mentality, right? It's like, you know, like a queer black trans woman in the South doesn't always control her own reality. Exactly. You know, like she is like struggling against like circumstances, but she controls her reaction to her reality. So, you know, that is that then the co-creator element to some degree. Um, but I think that, you know, you then have these very sort of like privileged mentalities running these like big spiritual communities and if they think that they are powerful enough to like control an entire reality, yeah. then of course they're gonna believe that like someone in the government, you know, that Joe Biden like sits up on like a throne surrounded by cloaked people and is like, 
but you know i control yeah. all of like society's reality you know what mm. and maybe the motherfucker does i don't know <laughs> totally <laughs> exactly but I, exactly day, yeah but at the end of the day like i'm probably only gonna like fully buy into that because like i have on one hand used my power to control other people so if i've done it of course they can do it yes yes but i've never been personally as angel lopez like <laughs> A gay boy from you know LA, like I've never always had the opportunity to control my own reality, which is yeah. probably why I've always questioned anyone who has said to me that, you know, like yes, I understood like the law of attraction and manifestation, but I also understand, you know, but that stuff I always kind of was like, okay, I get it to a degree, but then it's like, how do I control it within the reality that I am able to co-create? So yeah. I think you know, when it comes to your other question too, about like, what am I giving to people that I work with? Like, that's what I'm always trying to bring to it is that like, yeah, you live in this world and it's not always a world that's trying to support you or make you win. So how can you, you know, sort of access your sort of best self, your gifts, your skills and heal the wounds, the traumas that you've experienced to then kind of enter into this world and do your best to like create yeah. a reality that supports your well-being. Yeah, I love that. Beautiful. Yeah, that was great. I, I love that. And you're right. I mean, fuck, rich people do shady shit. And I think that anybody who was, we, we, we've seen that over and over and over and over again. Governments, doctor, I don't think it matters who it is. Once you move into that territory, it's really easy to take advantage of people. And it's human nature, I think, to an extent. You'd see somebody like Ellen, fucking you know this beam of light that is suddenly turning into this toxic person who knows if it's real or not but i i think you're right it's okay to question the powers that be because we have seen them screw over people over and over and over again the question now is how do you still stay engaged and safe and healthy without completely losing it um and what an amazing opportunity for our community to confront these things just like when racism comes to the surface and the protests happen it's like now we can fucking have the conversation out in the open in the news everybody is forced into this room and we have to deal with it now same thing with the new age community this is all going to come up and now we have to discuss it and people can decide what they want to do moving forward but yeah it's it's a crazy time out there and I, I think empowering people is important, validating their fears. I know that you're scared. And also there is a different way that you can react to this. Exactly, totally. And speaking of privilege, we apologize that our neighbor's gardener has just started to- <laughs> <laughs> no, there you go. I saw you looking at someone off camera and I was like- Like, oh, please, no, not right now. <laughs> it's Joe Biden, <laughs> I heard exactly. you. You're close. How dare you speak about me? Oh <laughs> my God, I love that. But yeah, I think that is it, right? And it's like, just, yeah, we always have to question anything we've given power to. And that kind of takes me back to the whole stand culture, you know, of like, my queen can do no wrong. And it's like, my queen can do wrong. Like my queen has like posted anti-vaxxer shit on her Instagram. She has like posted the N word, you know, like, oh my God, done wrong. like, and I'm not gonna just like say like, it's cool, whatever you've done. Sorry, now it's like, gotten but you know it just i think people have to be mindful of that what they're giving their power to yeah in every arena of their life yeah their absolutely you know <laughs> yeah and, and i think it's just a really easy distraction too right like if you can sign on to this idea that there's a bunch of people in the dark that are controlling the unseen and seen forces of reality it lets you off the hook whereas oh, i think yeah. spirituality is about taking responsibility for your part and just like living your life however you can you know as yeah. best you can putting one foot in front of the other checking in with your own heart and doing what you came here to do yeah mm -hmm. it's a party at your house it oh is my god hello it's yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be on gaze over COVID because I'm going to come to your house so we can finish this fucking condo. Yes, sir, exactly. really. I know, and then we're kidding. all going to get blasted. Okay. Yeah, people are going to um, hate me for that comment. I'm sorry, it was a joke. I can relax. Um, yeah, I'm so happy that I got to chat with you both. It, it's been great. And like I said, I'm so 
eager and hungry to connect with other people in the community and explore these conversations in a public way, like ask the hard questions, explore, you know, ask ourselves, why are we doing this? What is real? What is helpful? What isn't? How do we help our community? How do we support each other instead of just, you know, passively saying the universe will, the universe will work it out. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. And I think what's beautiful actually, you know, cause I'm 36. So I also grew up with Will and Grace and Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, you know? Yes. And it was like, are you a Will or are you a Jack? Or are you a Karen? And the oh, is, I'm a Karen. <laughs> but the thing is, is now we've gotten to a point where there can be diversity within the gay community, right? And I think it's good that that's also happening in the new age community. There's diversity within the new age community. It's not all homogenized. It's not all the same thing. And in the same way that there's like a church on every street corner and not every church leader is necessarily connected to their own heart, Definitely there's going to be, you know, all different sorts of readers and psychic eye bookshop owners and astrologers that are connected to the high vibe or aren't connected to the high vibe. And that's just part of the diversity of a community that is growing, which is good. And we all need to be skeptical, but also just like honest with ourselves in terms of what do you feel when you're in the presence of a reader or a healer? Do you well, feel good? Yeah. Or do you have the heebie-jeebies? And if you have the heebie-jeebies, <laughs> fucking trust that. Yeah, yeah you got to use your heart like as a compass, right? And you see it when you watch some of these, like, you know, we were like spiraling into the Nexium cult world. You know, we watched- Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, and you kind of see some of them say like, yeah, I kind of knew, I, start, I had a feeling, but it was still just working on a mental level. Right. And that's where it's like, you know, okay, we have to always check ourselves, keep questioning, right? Yeah, That's the red flags. Yeah, the intuition is, I've, I've heard this again, is people were like, I kind of felt like it wasn't right, but I kept going anyway. Um, for me, the law of attraction, it was like, I, I, I kind of am seeing that this isn't necessarily the be all and end all of my life, but I wanted so bad for it to be that easy, so fucking bad. And it's okay to go to those dark places because it provides hopefully a healing opportunity and then you get to the other side of that, you have more illumination, you can move on happy, healthier and clear. And I wanted to ask you both for advice moving forward, you just offered some great insight to people, but like, is there anything else you wanna add for people who are curious about spirituality, maybe feeling confused about it and are, are needing some uh, advice and hope? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone needs a teacher right like we didn't just like wake up one day with the knowledge of astrology or tarot but what's nice is there's lots of different ways to access a teacher it can be a book you know it can be a podcast but i think just opening up and claiming that you want to learn about something is a great way just to start that process um and to not be overwhelmed because you're always gonna be learning. You know, we've been practicing astrology and tarot for decades now and we're still learning. It's a vast canon of experience. And so don't feel like you're ever gonna get there. Just enjoy the process of learning about something that speaks to you. Yes. I love that. Yeah, and that it's never gonna show up looking perfect, right? Like you don't have to like, <laughs> right now I'm like, feeling that because I'm such a like perfectionist I know right so like, ready, like mm. having this like I feel like this is my spiritual lesson of like <laughs> every the moment like yeah it can't be like perfect because we shouldn't necessarily strive for that at all times you know like the universe isn't perfect so of course our experience will on some level be imperfect and that's what actually yeah. helps define a new level of perfection yeah, surrender. Perfection for me is in the surrender. And when I first learned about surrender, um, it was in recovery, actually, actually. And, you know, they were like, do you believe in God? And I was like, yes. Why do you believe in God? Because I was meant to be a star. And that is proof that God is real. Something along those lines. Like I, I felt a great destiny. And that to me was a calling from the divine. And then through the process of surrender, well, what if you don't become a star? What if you know, you don't make a lot of money. What if you don't find a boyfriend? And when I started asking myself those questions and I really explored what surrender meant, that is when ultimately I feel I got the deep rooted spiritual lesson of you can't control that. And the surrender is where the power comes from and the happiness and the joy, because once you let go of that, 
when you when you're nothing you can be everything and it's like that moment to moment i can access i don't need to be anything because everything i have is inside of me and it sounds fucking hokey like it's on a hallmark card but that is the truth it is inside it is so true sometimes the best truths can be summed up like in a hallmark card you know like it's <laughs> yes. not as you guys should make a fucking greeting card line <laughs> oh my god do it we will oh my god <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for joining me. I I loved it so much. I'm so glad that I got to see your faces and now consider you friends. I'm going to keep messaging you on Insta, so get ready. We're ready. And, uh, yes, have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you really soon. Oh, thanks, love. Thanks for having me. Take talk care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.